Good morning, one and all. If you know God has been with you during the past week, say thank you, God, or honk your horn. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. This morning, we're going to have our noisy offering. Uh, we're going to be collecting it during the prelude. We collect change each month. To support United Methodist Ministries. If you're in a car, just turn on your lights for service and someone will help you. Next week is the last Sunday to donate to the Navajo Projects. Funds will be used to get much needed PPE and basic supplies for the Four Corners Ministry in New Mexico. And with that, Let's prepare our hearts for a time of worship. worship. We have come here this morning to worship God. We have come seeking comfort, inspiration, community, and insight. We have come to open ourselves to the power of God's presence in our midst. We have come to offer up the seasons and turnings in our lives and to ask God's help in our learning and growing.
Exodus. A new pharaoh, who did not know Joseph, came to power in Egypt. And Pharaoh said to the Egyptians, Look how powerful the Israelites have become and how they outnumber us. We need to deal shrewdly with their increase against a time of war when they might turn against us and join our enemy, and so escape out of the country. So they oppressed the Israelites with overseers who put them to forced labor. And with them, they built the storage cities of Pitom and Ramesses. Yet the more the Israelites were oppressed, the more they multiplied and burst forth until the Egyptians dreaded the Israelites. So they made the Israelites utterly subservient with hard labor, brick and mortar work, and every kind of field work. The Egyptians were merciless in subjugating them with crushing labor. Pharaoh spoke to the midwives of the Hebrews, one was Shipra and the other Pua, and said, when you assist the Hebrew women in childbirth, examine them on the birthing stool, and if the baby is a boy, kill it. If it's a girl, let it live. But the midwives were God-fearing women, and they ignored the Pharaoh's instructions and let the male babies live. The midwives responded, these Hebrew women are different from Egyptian women. They are more robust and deliver even before the midwife arrives. God rewarded the midwives and the people increased in numbers and power. And since the midwives were God-fearing, God gave them families of their own. The Pharaoh then commanded all those in Egypt, let every boy that is born to the Hebrews be thrown into the Nile, but let every girl live. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would the children like to come forward? Yes, it is. Hi. This morning's message is about purpose, and it's about our gifts that were given from God. Um, one of the gifts I think I received was that I was um, a fairly good mother, and I hope I'm a good grandmother. I uh, taught school for a while. I um, was a church secretary. There are many purposes to our lives, not just one but we should find them at some point in our lives. And I know that my grandson is going to be a climber. I'm not sure if he's going to climb like Superman up a, a big tall building or if he's going to climb Mount Everest, but he's going to be climbing. And I know that Reverend Droder's grandchildren have special purposes in their life too. I know Trey is excellent at baseball and other um, sports. I know Dante has taught me the purpose of people with disabilities is that anyone can achieve things and go very far in this life if they just keep trying. And I know Kenny has taught me that if you keep moving, uh, you can grow up like my 91-year-old father and still be going. So keep moving. We all have a purpose, don't we? And we all have a reason to use our God's gifts. Would you pray with me? Lord, help us remember that each of us is special and we have something to give to this world. Thank you for our gifts and thank you for our purpose. May we know that not all of us can part the Red Sea like Moses did or lead people to the Holy Land, but we have other purposes in our life. Amen.
Another reading from Exodus. There was a man from the house of Levi who married a Levite woman, and she conceived and gave birth to a boy. And she saw that the baby was good, so she hid it for three months. When she could hide the baby no longer, she took a papyrus basket, daubed it with bitumen and pitch, and put the child in it and placed the basket among the reeds by the banks of the Nile. The baby's sister watched from a distance to learn what would happen. Pharaoh's daughter came down to the Nile to bathe, and while her attendants walked along the river bank, she noticed the basket among the reeds and sent her attendant to fetch it. Opening it, she saw the baby and how it wept. She was moved to pity and said, This must be one of the Hebrews' children. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's now our time of offering. Would you pray with me? Merciful Lord, you have provided each of us with many similar yet unique gifts. Thank you, Lord, for the talents and abilities of people within this congregation. We are a blessed people. Now we unite as one body to share in this worshipful act of the offering, giving us such a joyful experience. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to support the transformation of people's spiritual lives through the ministry and mission of this body of Christ. Amen.
as we join together in a time of prayer. I see that uh, Dan and Emmy are having an anniversary, so congratulations. That's awesome. <laughs> and we salute you. The church in our canal district for whom we are... Oh, I can take my mask off now. Sorry. <laughs> The church in our canal district for whom we are praying this week is Northampton United Methodist Church and Reverend Matthew Merriman. Uh, we want to continue our prayers for John Jordan, who is healing from a really bad bicycle accident. He is improving and getting stronger, but still in a lot of pain. So we need to buoy him with our prayers. We want to pray for Daryl Mills. This is Wayne Mills' brother. He's hospitalized with COVID-19 and needs our prayers. The Stubers are happy to report that baby Calvin tested negative for the virus, and we <coughs> praise God for that. We have been praying for uh, Chris Zinsmeyer for a long, long time. And Chris uh, was released from this earth to be with God in the eternal kingdom uh, this week. And so we praise God for an end to his suffering. But we want to continue to lift Stacy and the kids in prayer. We will be having a memorial service here September 5th uh, for Chris. And we want to pray for uh, Tony. This is Judy Hall's friend who needs prayers for healing. So with all of that in mind, will you join me in prayer? God of untold mercies, we, your church, gather today this morning to sing your praises, to hear and take in the scriptures to share of ourselves in many ways, and to pray. We know you hear our prayers and answer them with wisdom and grace. So we pray for those across our nation who are battered, afraid, worn out, confused, and in need. We pray for those in the paths of the hurricanes and for those suffering so greatly from the wildfires. We pray for your healing hand to move over us and bring us direction and peace. We pray for the courage and stamina to stand up and speak out when we experience injustice of any kind toward others of any kind. We want to make a difference, God. Lord, we pray for John as he continues his painful way back to recovery. Be with him and be with his family during this most difficult time. We pray for Daryl as he fights this virus. Give his body strength for the battle. We pray for the family of Northampton United Methodist Church and ask you to bless them in their mission field. God, we are so happy that baby Calvin is all right and that you have seen his family through this time of concern. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. We ask you to be with Tony. We thank you for receiving Chris into your eternal kingdom and we know that you are with his family. Oh, great physician. As we continue to deal with this insidious virus, we pray for those who are ill. We pray for those who are experiencing depression and anxiety. We pray for our schools as they carefully reopen and ask you to be with the students, the teachers, the therapists, the administration, and all the support staff. 
as they do everything they can do, we pray for health, well-being, and peace. Savior of us all, come into our hearts and come into our lives. Fill us in ways that spill over to others. And even as you have shown us so much grace, help us to show that grace to others. Even as you have forgiven our sins, help us to forgive others. Even as you have provided for us, help us always to share our abundance with others. And even as you sacrificed for us, help us to sacrifice for our faith. And God, we pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. When Jesus came to the neighborhood of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples this question. What do people say about who the chosen one is? And they replied, well, some say John the baptizer, others say Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And you, he said, who do you say I am? You are the Messiah, Simon Peter answered, the firstborn of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon ben Jonah. No mere mortal has revealed this to you, but my Abba God in heaven. I also tell you this, your name now is Rock, and on bedrock like this I will build my community, and the jaws of death will not prevail against it. Here, I'll give you the keys to the reign of heaven. Whatever you declare bound on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you declare loosed on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then Jesus strictly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We all probably know people, or we are the people, who have been in terrible, life-threatening situations and who have made it through to the other side. Sometimes these situations are quite dire. I've been privileged to walk with some of you when health circumstances have threatened your life and you fought through the crisis and returned to us. John Jordan is recovering from an accident that could have cost his life. I've had a couple close calls now and through prayer and expert medical staff have had my life spared. I've heard people say, you must have been saved for a purpose, or God must have a greater purpose for you. When such words have been directed toward me, they have made me uncomfortable. Like people were accept expecting something super grand from me, which has never happened. I've been able to follow God's direction for my life. I've learned, I've taught, I've come back to parish ministry. 
Nothing outstanding has happened to me or been created by me. I've simply returned to life. Yet. And hold that yet for just a little bit, would you? Two weeks ago, we looked at the first part of Joseph's story. After he entered Pharaoh's household, he became Pharaoh's right-hand man. He brought his family to Egypt, and they were very successful and living a good life. But we hear a clear foretaste that things were about to change. A new pharaoh came to power who did not know Joseph and did not trust the Israelites. And this pharaoh speaks falsely when he said that their people outnumbered the Egyptians. That is simply not true. What this pharaoh wanted to create was an enemy within Egypt. And he chose the Israelites to be the hated people, the hated immigrants. And of course, we've experienced this in our own country with African immigrants, both forced and free, We've experienced this with native-born peoples. We've experienced this with Chinese laborers who built the railroad and were then told they were no longer needed in our society. We've done this with the Japanese and those fleeing Vietnam and Cambodia. And most recently, we've done this with Mexican and Latin American immigrants and refugees. None of these people, as a people, posed a serious danger, except, of course, when they fought back. Our government and our society wanted to create enemies within. And this, of course, happens all over the world when governments choose a group of people within their nations to hate. So politically, this new pharaoh went off on the Israelites and put into place some horrible policies, forced labor under increasingly terrible conditions, and the most heinous policy that focused on breaking up families, the killing of newborn children, in particular, baby boys. Such a thing, separating the baby boys from their mothers and families by execution, was an atrocity. And families broke apart because of it. In the midst of this evil, there were women who would thwart Pharaoh's plan. Midwives refused to hold, hand over the newborns, which gave their families the ability to hide their sons and maybe even get them out of Egypt. This happened to a woman who gave birth to a baby boy we would later know was Moses. She hid the baby as long as she could and then placed him in a basket and set him to float down the Nile. But she was very strategic in her planning, knowing that Pharaoh's palace was just down the river. The baby's big sister Miriam followed the basket to make sure it got into the right hands. The baby's very life was in danger, but he was given back his life by Pharaoh's daughter. Both the mother and the daughter of Pharaoh saved this child. And one wonders if someone in the family said, God must have a special purpose for this boy. 
of course, we don't have to be gravely ill or injured or threatened with annihilation to be saved. In fact, most of us aren't. We may just be ordinary folks living ordinary lives, doing our best, or not, facing life's challenges. We may go for a long time before we know that we are in danger and in need of a savior. Our passage from Matthew speaks not only to the people of the first century, but very clearly to us. In the Roman world, the Jews were the enemy within. And it was obvious to them that danger was fast approaching. Jesus asked his disciples if they understood his identity. And as Kathy read, some people were saying he was John the baptizer, come back to life. Some thought he was Elijah, who was thought to come back to usher in the end times. Or he might be one of the other prophets. And this response must have been disturbing to Jesus. Some of the people weren't getting him. Then Peter spoke up. He said to Jesus, You are Messiah. Peter knew that more than his physical life was in peril, more than the lives of his nation. He knew with, that without the intervention of God, his soul was in danger, and he needed God to save. And being saved, that is, accepting Jesus as the Christ, Jesus declared that Peter was saved for a purpose, to build his church. Moses and Peter were saved for a purpose, and in their cases, that purpose was huge. Long before my brushes with death, I had asked Jesus to come into my life I had declared him the Christ, my Savior. And after those brushes with death, I wondered why my life was spared. I didn't lead people to the promised land. I wasn't the cornerstone of the church. I haven't done great and glorious things. And here comes the yet. Yet. I have lived in the knowledge that I am a child of God. And I have been given life to serve God. I've been given the opportunity to do several things in my professions. I've been given the opportunity to witness to my family and especially my grandsons that God loves them and God will open a way. I've been given the great honor to pastor churches and to accept the pastoring of congregations toward me. All of us are saved for a purpose. We might end up living that purpose in very public ways, or we might live that purpose in our daily walk with God as we invite people to share our faith. We could become the President of the United States, or we could volunteer to help children with their homework. We could be the parent, the grandparent, the aunt or uncle or teacher or scout leader who shows young people what it means to live a Christian life and put our faith in Jesus Christ. Each of us 
has been saved from hell and from death. Each of us has been claimed by God. Each of us has the opportunity to embrace our salvation and then putting ourselves to work for God's kingdom. No matter who we are, all of us need saving. And believe me, each one of us is saved for a purpose. to the world now, sharing our purpose, sharing what God has given us to share with others. And we go in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, and we are blessed. God go with you this week. Amen. <laughs>